Good morning everybody, 12th of July and uh, first stage after the rest day from Andorra Akalis. So yeah, good news. One of the smaller sponsors, Sunweb, becomes also a title sponsor. More money into cycling, which is a nice sign and very welcome. This is something great. Um, yeah, and uh, to a bit repeat the big race, the epic race from Sunday, for sure we are very proud and amazed. We are happy with Tom de Moulin's awesome ride. That was really something we didn't expect in in this way and to be honest Thibaut Pinot and Rafael Maika they shouldn't have brought him until the flat part of this climb and yeah you you can't let him go if you once let Tom go then it's a pretty tough thing to catch him back and in the end we were the lucky guys to cheer so well done chapeau that was an awesome move Tom uh, fingers crossed for Friday. Maybe you can repeat this kind of racing on the TT. Maybe it sounds a bit strange, but it will be a very tough start today due to the reason that you, yeah, very often have really bad legs. Huh? You have something like a um, daily performance, and the rest day sort of interrupts this. So, to be honest, the first 24 kilometers today, the first hill immediately after the start line, ooh, ooh, this will really hurt. I remember it from my days and uh, I didn't like it that much. Then you have one week, a little bit more of the this year's Tour de France already done and for sure several teams didn't have the expected and uh, the planned and programmed success. So what happened yesterday? Mainly those guys, those sports directors of these teams um, have had a big meeting and have said, hey guys, tomorrow after the rest day, you have to be in the breakaway. And so this will be a big war, a big fight today to be in that head group, which will, from my point of view, also move until the finish line, because maybe you guys have seen it, just 10 k to go, there's a third category climb and from my point of view, the sprinter teams will not try to close the hole and catch the head group as it won't be sure that the sprinters can really move over the last little hill regarding to what we've had on Sunday, it's just a hill but it's hard enough to separate the GC and the um, sprinters, the rulers, I don't think the sprinters can do it to the finish today. Yeah, it will be an interesting day. The cool thing in this company Alpecin is that we have a really small hierarchy. So today my boss is driving me. <laughs> is that great? I like. So what else do we have? We have, um, we have heard uh, from, from the boys in France that Warren is still fighting to, to come back and um, yeah he struggled a bit with the heat and um, I guess we will have something like three guys protecting him helping that he hopefully moves back into the first 10 of the GC and a reminder of last year after the rest day okay it was the second one but after the rest day Simon Geschke had beautiful legs and won the stage so I tried to motivate him as good as possible that he might move into the breakaway today. I guess he has the legs, he has the potential and for sure he has the power to slip over the last mountain in a breakaway and make it become his day. So from our side in Bielefeld we really cheer for Simon Geschke. We hope he's in the break today and he goes for the stage victory. That's something I would really much appreciate if he can try it so fingers crossed for giant alpacin we have another question today from uh, last sunday stage where the guys have really generated awesome uh, high speeds uh, close to 130 kilometers an hour and markus burkhardt the german rider and um, really nice guy from bmc has uh, uploaded his file on Strava showing 130 kilometers per hour. So we had the question, is this real? And yes, 
this is real. The one I have seen, the highest one on uh, on my computer has been 116.8 kilometers. So even even I've been close to these to these speeds those days, and maybe I can do it even faster these days with 80 kilos. I have to try, but now yeah, I'm a I'm a family guy. I have a, a little daughter, and I I don't think my wife will like it that much as I'm uh, not cycling for money. I'm not a professional anymore. But um, yeah, the question was: Is this still okay regarding the bike? And can you still brake? Can you still handle the bike? Is the frame stable enough? And yeah, I mean. As a rider, you don't feel the, the big difference in between, let's say, 90 and 120, 130 kilometers an hour. It all becomes uh, uh, faster. You feel that, but you don't e really feel uncomfortable. You have uh, really, really nice products. You have very stiff frames these days. You have good brakes and for sure you don't ride that fast. If you're not um, of the opinion that you can still brake early enough and that you are unable to handle the bike so yeah we do this the guys do this a lot of time uh, on they are 30 40 thousand kilometers per year on their bike so yeah if the race per course uh, is giving you the chance then you just do the fastest you can but it's not very often that you lose your control and uh, this is very good that you don't lose that. Thanks for watching my little on-road movie today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel and uh, fingers crossed for you winning one of these awesome giant bikes we still have in the raffle. The best bikes on the planet at the moment, winning nearly every test throughout Europe. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye.